All right, guys, here's the different parts of the flower. Again, this is from our lab. These will be on the, uh, on the quiz, so just keep that in mind as you, uh, or on the test, excuse me, on Monday and Tuesday. Make sure you know these different parts. Um, again, I'll kind of break down each one of these and what they do, all things that you had to identify in the lab itself. So the first one are the sepals. Their job is to protect the flower before opening. They're typically green, this area right back in here, so it's protecting the rose that you can see there. Um, and it also can play a role in the actual flower itself. You'll see that on the next slide. So in this case, here they are. They've opened up, protect the flower. Sometimes these will just fall off and whittle away. Other times they create this arcing support for the flower. And in this case, can actually play a role in um, supporting the flower and its appearance to attract its pollinator. The petal's main function is to attract the pollinators depending upon um, depending upon whether it's a uh, what the pollinator is. It can have different appearance, different colors, uh, different scents as well, all with the purpose of attracting those pollinators. Whether it's an insect, a bee, a bat, a bird, whatever the case may be, the petal's main job is to attract the pollinator. You can see here in this particular, this is the same flower, those petals up there, they look like that, but in actuality, to an insect it looks like this to allow them to be attracted to, and it kind of looks like a bullseye for them. The stamens are the male part of the flower, and so when we talk about the stamen, it is uh, this whole region here. Uh, individual pollen grain would be like a little dot on there. This is the anther, and the filament is the... Um, the stalk with which the, the uh, anther actually sits. And so again, in this particular plant, we see a lot of um, male um, anthers. This is the female part that we'll talk about on the next slide. Again, there's your sepal that has protection. There's your petals. The stigma is the opening in the female. So you can see right in this region here is where the stigma would be. Um, its job is when a pollen grain touches that particular region, that's when pollinization occurs. does not necessarily guarantee germination or fertilization, but that's the female portion. And again, it's the pistil, which is the female portion, um, is located, the stigma is located on top there. And that's where you can actually see, so the pollen would land on this portion here. Uh, the pistil, the stigma is the top opening part. If a pollen grain for the right species is found and located on, at the stigma, what will happen is we do a process called fertilization, where this pollen grain, one cell becomes the pollen tube, which creates an alley or, or avenue for the, uh, the other sperm cells to travel, and the other ones will come down and actually participate in the fertilization process. The ovary is the area where um, this develops, and the ovules will actually develop into seeds. Multiple ovules produce multiple seeds. This is a great diagram. I think I, if I was preparing for the test, I would have that. So you can kind of see your, pe your petal up here. The stigma is the top part, okay? You know, your pistil is this region right here. Um, your filament here, anther. So the ones you have to know, petal, stigma, pollen grain, anther, stamen, pistil, filament, okay? Style, oval, and ovary, all of these would be a great matching section on the test. If it was me, I'd probably use the exact same diagram that I'm providing you. So if you need to you know, take a second to kind of study this or make sure you have it down, um, now is the opportunity for you to do that. Again, I'll use this exact diagram on the test if I didn't make myself clear. All right, so uh, again, we're gonna talk real quick about this the megaspore, um, the megaspore wants a process of fertilization, and what's going to happen is the nuclei itself will develop into the egg, and um, those will actually become seeds if fertilization occurs. So you can kind of see this process occurring. Now what's important is in fruit developers, this endosperm region here is going to actually develop into the uh, fruit. It is a 3N because it has the original 2N with the new pollen grain. Okay, and this is just going through the male part. I'm not going to have too many questions on this, just knowing how to make the sperm and the egg for fertilization. You can kind of see that here. Notice with this particular uh, type of pollen, inside the pollen grain itself, it has the sperm cell that will do the fertilization. That's going to become the pollen tube. 
and one of these sperm cells will actually pollen can fertilize the egg, the other one will create fertilize the endosperm to create the fruit, and then this, this third thing over here is going to be the cell. Pollinization is the actual act of pollen grains coming into contact of the stigma. Again, it happens in the same cell. This is the first thing. All first thing has to happen. Any flower to be produced, pollinization needs to occur. Pollinization will lead to fertilization. Fertilization leads to germination. Not all pollinizations will lead to those other two stages, depending on what goes on. So in other words, just because pollinization occurs does not mean fertilization. Just like in humans, sexual intercourse would be like pollinization. Not all sexual intercourse interacts with or causes a child to be born or even fertilize an egg. And so pollinization is just the act of pollen reaching there. The pollinators are going to be the ones that actually do it. The plant can be either pollinated by a particular pollinator or it can be pollinated by the wind. If you're going to be pollinated by a pollinator, you need to bring them in. Common examples would be bees, moths, flies, birds can also be pollinators. And then um, if you're going to be pollinated by the wind, you're going to use a lot more. Um, so it's about sample size and then... Again, high quantities, you use Sherman in the air. Grasses, pine trees, they're going to typically use wind pollinization. So, uh, again, it's two different strategies to accomplish the same goal. You can kind of see all here the hawk moths, um, bees, all examples of pollinators. They have to have some way to do it. You have to, they're doing your work for you, so you have to provide them something. In this case, you can give them nectar or nutrients as well. Some other pollinators are a little bit different. Notice different flowers to equal a different pollinator. So there, hummingbird, long snout, long tube. Here's a bat. Again, less colors. It's at night, large, because you need that large face. will actually come and talk to the flower. And then in this case, here is a pollinator by a, mo a mouse. It's found on the ground, has a different scent. So they are become very specific, and they have a partnership between the two. Fertilization is when the egg actually becomes fertilized by the egg after pollinization. You can have double fertilization. Make sure you know this. I'm going to leave this up here. You can read. This is for fruits. Fruits will create a uh, double fertilization. Again, that fruit itself actually is going to have some different purposes. We talked about that in the lab, and that was what your homework is. This just clarifies it if you need some updated information. The fruit is going to actually form from, um, and it's called the endosperm. And it is triploid, which means it has 3N. Three, uh, three so if uh, a haploid has 21 cells, uh, diploid has 42, the endosperm will have uh, 63 you can kind of see this process occurring here. Again, the pollen grain up top, that's pollinization. You have one of the cells will actually become the pollen tube, and then you have the nuclei coming down to do the fertilization. In this case, you can see the endosperm that's around the bean itself. This is the process of fertilization. This will be the nutrients for the plant. And then last things are seeds. Seeds are dispersed by different mechanisms, either wind, water, or animals, and each one has a different thing to allow that. If seeds land in the proper spot, they'll germinate and grow a new plant. Again, a quick overview of what we did in lab. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure you know that matching section.